Good morning, everyone. Good afternoon and good evening, wherever you are out there. What a most significant ad that was a promo that we just saw on Rhythm of Change. A welcome to the sixth annual Belize International Yoga Festival. This time it's a virtual coming together, reaching out to people around the world, a community revolution yoga evolution. I'm Ambassador Shabazz, a family to all things Om Shanti, Om Shanti Belize, Rock, Martha, and Michelle Williams, and the collaborative of dedicated years that we've had um, for a very long time. I'm here speaking to you from the United States, and I'm excited to moderate the power of resilience, respect, and empowerment. You know, as an overview, Rock has been long in motion, most of you know that, touching the lives of local and international citizens. And the festival is a way to reach at a very timely uh, period in American and world history, let me not say America, in, in world um, occurrences, a welcoming and accessible pathway for many of us to find a way to uh, wellness. And I have the absolute distinction and pleasure of being a part of a, an astute panel as we journey this amazing festival of discovery together. Um, we had an opportunity to speak a few days ago and I was looking forward to joining all of you again today and um, having the, the spell of time to insert our value as it relates to the work of rock, the festival, yoga and such. So I would like to invite you, each of you, the guests to, um, Introduce yourselves to the greater rock community, um, starting with Dr. Estrada. Good evening. I'm Colin Estrada. I'm uh, the principal of All Saints School in Belize and also um, a therapist. Um, and for over the past 12 to 13 years, I've been working with children with disabilities um, and at my school, I've also been uh, working as, as, as the principal. It's working with an entire community on a whole. So I, am a, I have been um, a member of the Rock Board of Governors. And so it's nice to be here. Thank you. Ms. Panto. Um Yes. Hi, everyone. My name is Tafara Andazi Panton. Um, I'm an entrepreneur. I have an entertainment business in Belize, and I also have an accounting services uh, business that is run out of New York. I have, I'm the treasurer on the Rock Board, and I've uh, been a part of Rock for a number of years now. And I'm really grateful for the community that we've created and the service that we've been able to give um, to the people of Belize as it relates to yoga and meditation and just, you know, creating a uh, balance in, in life. Good evening, everyone. Um, thank you for this invitation to be a part of the panel. My name is Mars Mejia. I'm 17 years old and I'm a first year student at SJCJC in Belize City. I'm a member of the Model United Nations Club at my school and Ms. Aloma informed us about the festival and asked if anyone would like to volunteer. I saw it as a great opportunity to learn, so here I am. I'm very excited to be here. Um, I only started yoga some months ago. I must say that it has been helping me a lot during the pandemic and I plan to continue on my spiritual journey. Once again, thank you for having me. Ms. Torres. Hello everyone, my name is Emily Torres. I am a second year history and literature major at SJCJC. I am also a member of the Mali United Nations Club. I live in San Ignacio, Cayo. And of course, well, I am the public relations officer of the student council. I also found out about, about Rock this year and it was actually through a meditation session that was offered by Michelle through the teachers and it was very relaxing. So I am glad to be here today and it's truly an honor to be here to speak with you all. Welcome. Mr. Miranda. 
Hi, good evening. I'm glad to be part of this panel. I am a businessman, a father, and I volunteer with different organizations, currently the president of the Human Resource Professionals Association and also of the Central American Region Engineering Association. Thank you. Ms. McCutcheon. Hello. Yes. Good evening. Yes. My name is Judy McCutcheon. I live in Grenada. Um, so I don't have any direct link to Rock, but I lived in Belize for 10 years. So Michelle and I have been friends for that length of time that I lived in Belize. I am a management consultant and a coach. And um, I have a passion really for helping women to live their greatest, the greatest and best life ever. Um, I, I haven't practiced yoga for the year, I have to admit, because we've been in a lockdown situation, but um, I would do yoga twice a week, um, Friday, Tuesdays and Thursdays at 5 a.m. And it really has helped me to, um, to become a lot more aware of who I am. So for that, I am very grateful and I am honored and humbled to be a part of this panel. Thank you. Thank you all. It's been very exciting for me after, after speaking to you all a few days ago. I was really looking forward to this um, camaraderie again and for the honesty and the openness that was shared in our preliminary discussion, I think that there's some authentic conversations that would be valued um, that we can share with the larger population. Um, one of the questions, you, m most of you in your introductions touched on a number of things already. And my preliminary question will be in reference to the genesis of intrigue for you, where yoga was introduced to you and why, what the beckoning for that was, what the calling for something like yoga, very different to most populations. And in context, to what this full year, we're now in December, nine, 10 months later with all kinds of changes and impacts. And I'd like to start first with the youth focus. Uh, Ms. Mejia and Ms. Torres, if you can share the impact for you, but two sides of that question, the, the genesis of not just the introduction, but the yearning and the application of yoga to your lives and its value, and how you think this year with, um, the challenges as a result of the pandemic has impacted you, yourselves, your, your, your classmates, the youth population, and what impact do you think yoga can have in that? Okay, so like I said before, I only started yoga some months ago, mainly because of all of the stress and anxiety that I've been facing because of the pandemic. Um, with Corona, we had to start doing online classes. And for myself and many other students, it has been challenging and it has taken a toll on me physically and mentally. So I decided to try and find different ways to deal with all of these problems internally and yoga was a solution. Um, my other classmates, like for me, I viewed yoga as, you know, flexibility, um, crazy positions and stuff. So I wasn't interested in it at, as, at first, but as I started to research on it, I realized that it can be very beneficial to me mentally and physically, that's why I took it on. But I know for a lot of students and youths out there, they had the same view as I did. So, right. yeah. Ms. Torres. Yeah, so first I would like to start off with the resilience aspect of it which is of course to me, what resilience was, was my capacity to recover quickly from the difficulties, the discomfort and the toughness that is happening in the entire world right now without getting caught in the suffering that I was experiencing. And what yoga has done is it has changed my life for the better. After practicing yoga, I realized that I have the ability to return to my original form, no matter how much I have been bent, stretched and compressed and of course these terms sound like movement but 
what I learn on the mat can be applied to every aspect of my life. And what I believe is an issue with people of my age range is being able to balance everything that is going on after junior college, what the next chapter of our lives have has to hold, what we will be doing in the future. And what we need to do is face the conflict of our past, our present. Students are often worried about academics, their social life, which has been impacted by the pandemic. And then there comes the worry of your future. But what we can do is use yoga as a tool of alignment. And what this alignment does is it connects your mind, your body, your faith, or your spirituality. And this tool is what I use to achieve resilience and to bounce back from any adversities that I may experience. And what, can I, what I can say is I have struggled with anxiety in the past, and I used to be stressed a lot because of academics and everything that was happening with the pandemic. And I know many of us are not easily convinced when someone tells you, yes, yoga does help with anxiety. But what I want to share with you all today is something that I found out from a research done by Dr. James Eastall and his team of Harvard researchers. What they did was an eight week yoga program and they found out that yoga drastically decreased medical visits and it helps to relieve depression and anxiety. Thank you very much. It's wonderful to hear both of you as young ladies in high school, and high school is what we call it in the United States, so young and so clear and so articulate about both the value of including, acknowledging your vulnerabilities and then working on that which strengthens who you are in the context of something that many people have had a full plate this year. So sometimes us as adults have dropped the ball, um, but even we are being impacted by such um, and trying to figure out the best way to collectively come together. And this has been an amazing medium, yoga, breathing, be finding one's central, central self is very, very essential. Um, staying on the topic of young people, I want to speak to Mr. Miranda as a parent of an amazing young man. What has been, um, what has resonated for you specifically in your family in context to <laughs> yoga? Uh, what has resonated with me is, is that I have a child diagnosed with Asperger's back then. And uh, one of the avenues with the help of Dr. Stradivan was yoga itself and mindfulness. So he started that and he evolved into being able to manage his anger. So that was one of the biggest success that I have seen with my child through yoga. So yoga has really changed his life. He's now going to university and he is be able to operate independently because Asperger's itself is difficult to, to, to navigate school and being uh, having a social life. Yoga has opened that social life for him as well. So I have seen many benefits of yoga itself. Thank you, Mr. Miranda. So Dr. Estrada, this is very different for you because you have to manage the triad and the triad as an educator. So what has that ecosystem been for educators, students, and their respective families this year? Um, both the challenge and the resolves in context to the ways in which um, COVID and the pandemic has trickled down, but maybe with your knowledge in context to yoga, the value and benefit so let me let me just start off in terms of um, your original question in terms of how I got into yoga. Mm -hmm. And one of the simplest things is um, I was, as a caregiver, um, I had been immo immobilized by my sciatica. Um, and so I had to look for a method of self-care. And so one of the avenues was going to Michelle, who um, helped with um, the yoga practice um, and eventually what happened is that while I was at the ministry seeing not it was not only just talking about self-care it was implementing self-care for the staff at the time and so uh, when we had meetings in the city uh, I would um, tell Michelle can you do um, a yoga session for my staff and so we, we had done several sessions 
with the staff of counselors to be able to do self-care because a lot of times you would talk about how oh, self-care, 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 and it's something that is just theoretical, not practical. And so it was bringing the, the, the theory into practice right. so that the counselors would be able to see that we can do this for ourselves, you know? And then eventually what, what happened is that that springboard into whereby we had a... Um, Jeremy M. Enriquez also doing mindfulness for not only the counselors within my unit, right. but also the counselors nationally. Right. And then we also did, um, Michelle had come in and she had done some um, a session while I was at the ministry to be able to do yoga for the um, during our summer sessions for all of the counselors that would those those sessions with jeremy would also springboard whereby the ministry adopted and paid for in terms of scholarship mindfulness education okay and so um mindfulness with the, the counselors trained in mindfulness then it also helps so it helps the the students and the greater greater population um, and I could also veer off into whereby um, on a personal level um, in terms of my yoga practice, when my wife was pregnant with our third child, we also did couples therapy in um, couples yoga um, during her pregnancy so that it gave us time to also connect. Okay. Now, as, as, it, as, it, as it goes forward into... The, the school year and looking at what is happening in COVID. As the leader of an institution, you have to you have to most of the time be centered. Mm -hmm. And then you also have to be able to see how is it that you're dealing with the stresses of teachers being diagnosed with COVID, some of them being in contact with COVID, some of the family members being in, in contact with persons that have COVID. And then just the daily stresses in terms of your personal reaction in terms of how you're going to react to staff members with them going through the various difficulties that they have. And at times, how is it that you're going to be able to reach out to the staff members when you know that how their situation, different situation. And also in terms of how do you deal with the families that are there with the various right. situations, okay? Well, you know, I knew that asking you this question was going to have uh, many arteries because yeah. I get to speak to superintendents of schools, um, leaders that are in the academic field who are not just the parent with the child, but who are now by August, September, October, November, dealing with the impact the trickle down on many, many lives, thousands of lives, and having to be responsible without regard to what our own personal constitution of strength and resilience might be. So would, I do recall when the Ministry of Education, we were so excited, uh, agreed to um, sponsor the 30 um, teachers. And so that's two years ago. Has that been duplicated or, or uh, continued in any kind of way? To, to my knowledge, um, and because within those two years I've been at um, All Saints, um, I know that it, from, from the knowledge that I have, I don't think that there have been a second cohort of um, persons that have been trained. But what I know is that um, Mrs. Vasquez has been going around and asking that how people practice the mindfulness within the different schools because one of the primary focus was to be able to get the training and implement the practice the mindful mindfulness practice within the various schools that are there you know so that is one of the things that i know that they aim um, they have been pushing well this is very significant for rock and why we have to support rock to make sure that because rock gives it shares it extends it ensures it um, and all of the growing populations of people who are extended family to rock um, are really dedicated to making sure this happens so that where there are 30, we should have 300. And that doesn't mean that they've had the formal training, but they've had the exposure. 
and for as many schools, as many industries, as many ministries rather that exist and that were the beneficiaries of that training, we should make sure that that's mobilized and affirmed because this is the very time. It's not just to quiet your day, but it's to, in order to equip you with such crises as we've experienced in this year. So it's not the single challenge, it's the accumulation of the challenge. Um, and making sure that even this festival, the fact that it is virtual and recorded, that perhaps that there are segments that can be shared over and over. And the voice that, that came from the two high school students, um, more and more young people get to hear the impact, whether you just started three months ago or you've been doing it forever, that it matters to be able to have a support system, an internal support system, and an empowering one that does not require a doctor's diagnosis or doesn't require external anesthesia of any kind that you can really learn how to manifest that for yourself. And so thank you, Dr. Estrada. And I have to keep checking on you because I can only imagine the plate that you hold, um, you and your colleagues hold as principals throughout the country. And, um, and we have to make sure that that ecosystem is um, strengthened so that you are not alone when you have to um, support parents by nurturing their young people as well. Um, yes, ma'am. Yeah, that wasn't an order. You said, yes, ma'am. Like, yeah. <laughs> that was really more of a passion because I'm working with, with um, superintendents of schools. I'm working with, with students year round and when the summer became the fall and real life meant that these young people had to rejoin and teachers had to figure it out on the fly. Um, it was a, there was no plan in action. So what do we learn from this year for all of the things that were, that wounded us for things that we called um, a challenge, how do we then make them an inspiration or a clarity on innovation? How do we move that forward so that there's some um, critical component that enables us to be fit for, for anything else becomes very important. Yes? Yeah. Yeah, you're quite right. And it, what, what, what it speaks of is that it, it is giving us a, a time to be able to, to step back from all of the hustling and bustling. Um, and even it, I, I relate it to um, if we have the growth mindset, you know, how are, how are we going to um, remain the same or are we going to use our experiences to be able to grow? Okay. And a lot of times what can happen is that we could say how I'm, I'm going through a bad time rather than looking at the experience and having the mindset and the growth mindset to say that um, I have learned this lesson within this period of time so that I'm able to move forward. Um, and a lot of times what happens is that we could be doing everything else for everybody except for ourselves. Yeah. And so oh. um, being, 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 being locked up at home or being, um, or being socially isolated, for example, just using that, um, it, it lends so for us to be able to dwell inside internally. Let's go inside. Let's go to that to that, to those to that person inside and see how is it that we're able to deal with us so then eventually after we have cleaned out the cobwebs of our own internal um, struggles then we're able to work with other people indeed so now I'd like to speak to Ms Pantone and uh, Madam McCutcheon you know we spoke about um, how yoga strengthens one's access to spirituality and I'm curious to know what you were calling upon when yoga entered your life directly. Actually, I was uh, still a student when I discovered yoga. I had I had finished my bachelor's degree in accounting. I was in New York and um, I had been working for a year and I decided to go back to school for my um, creative, my creativity, my creative side. So I was doing acting classes. And um, one of the teachers recommended that I do yoga. Um, so I went to a bunch of different uh, yoga classes all over New York. <laughs> and it was when I really connected to uh, meditation. 
that that really did something for me. It brought me a balance that I, I knew that I needed something, you know, both the entertainment world and the accounting world can be um, high stress and high paced. And New York is a high paced place, you know. Um, so so those two areas are stressful in its own way. And I, I wasn't sure what I was looking for, but when I found yoga and meditation, that's what I needed. I needed that balance. I needed that kind of um, quiet time to just, you know, sit and have some time with myself and um, with connecting to, you know, that, that higher power to kind of bring balance and stability into my daily life. Indeed. Ms. It McCle really deepened, um, sorry, it really deepened my understanding of, of um, prayer. You know, I, I was raised in a very religious family. I was, you know, going to church and it really gave me uh, more depth to, to what prayer meant because now for me, meditation is also prayer. Right. It's only, yeah. Thank you. Um, um, Ms. McCutcheon. Okay, so I when I moved from Belize to Grenada, um, I was I was really having a difficult time in my marriage. And so I'm in a place, I don't know anybody. I have a four and a five year old. So that's the, all the conversations I would have every day. And then um, I met I met someone who, you know, I, I started going to the gym and then I met someone and they used to have yoga classes at the gym. So I started going to yoga classes at the gym. And then I've, I felt, well, there must be something a little bit more to what this is offering. And like Miss Panton, I discovered meditation and I think that is what really brought it home for me. It really took me to a whole new level. I mean, I was able to handle the stress and deal with it rationally and make rational decisions, you know? So I, I am really, really thankful to have discovered both yoga and meditation. Absolutely. First of all, I'm watching your face light up, you know, as you're talk, <laughs> telling your story in real time from what you were going through at the beginning and to what emerged, that there's a light that comes over your face because the freedom and the power that's already yours, right? It's already yours. You just have to have a guide or a pathway to figure out how to claim it, how to yeah. find it, but it's already yours. And so with that said, I'd like to discuss some of the things that were like taboos, and this is for everyone. What were taboos about yoga and meditation? Because I think we have to, in order to make it open to everyone so that people realize the freedom of yoga rather than the restrictions per yoga, we have to talk about the things that keep people from in, engaging so that we can clarify that. So let me start with the youngsters, you know, because for young people, you said you thought it was physical. Um, um, and then when people are talking about one's own personal power, that's also frightening because people may or may not have known how to access that before. So from a, from a young perspective, how would you translate that? How would you articulate that to other people your age? Well, like I said before, a lot of young people my age don't do yoga or meditation. It's because of the how they portray it. Yeah. Like a lot of boys think think that like yoga is suited more for women. And when you think of yoga, you think about you know flexibility. Um, you know, it's for health, not like fitness for like buff people and stuff like that. That's why a lot of boys don't do it because they think that if they do yoga. It's not suited for them, but really it's um, it's good for your entire body. It helps all parts of the body. Um, yeah. And so for you and Ms. Um, Torres, how would you language that if you were the ambassadors of yoga for young voices, young people, considering the aches and pains or frustrations or restrictions that you experience yourselves right now? 
um, especially 15, 16, 17, 18. There's a lot that ha that's on the shoulders of young people. How would you articulate that if you were the one marketing it? Well, when I first thought about yoga, I thought the first thing that comes to my, what, that came to my mind when I thought of yoga is someone holding a mat and using like leggings and good yoga equipment and doing all kinds of positions and stretching. So I personally thought I could never do yoga. How can I do all those movements? I can't do that. And this is where I feel like parents play a key role because you, you need to teach your children that yoga isn't just that. Of course, asana is a big part of yoga, the movement and all of that. But yoga is an inner experience, something that brings alignment. Like I mentioned earlier, is a tool that we can use to, that we can use to bring resilience, disrespect, and empowerment. That is, of course, our topics today. And with this inner experience, I want to make mention of the fifth limb of yoga, which is pratyahara, which is basically you going on a journey within without being distracted from the outside world. And so everyone here who is listening, youngsters, the parents, what you need to bear in mind is that, of course, yoga will help you with flexibility, movement, but you can use this flexibility in another aspect, flexibility in your mind, the way you think, how you do school work, manage your work life, your social life, everything. So it's not just these movements that everyone has the misconception that, mm -hmm. oh, no, I can't, I'm not flexible. I can't do yoga. It's not just that, but it's this inner meditation, this inner experience. And when you do yoga, the, like the root of it or everything starts within. It's not just outside your physical appearance, your movement, if you're flexible or not, it starts within and your mindset. Thank you very much to both of you. Mr. Miranda, I wanted to also ask you the same, if you were speaking on behalf of your son, how would he articulate that? And also to other parents who need the same support, um, no matter where one is on the spectrum. I think that the pressure that teens experience, um, whether it's, whether it's um, hormonal, as well as the physiological, um, how do we make sure that we as a general population support those on the spectrum? And how would one on the spectrum, if you were giving language for you on behalf of your son, how do we language, how do we prepare for that? How do we assure that? How do we make sure that teachers, that, that colleagues, um, other parents, let me simplify it. How would you language this to other parents? Yeah, it, it's a very loaded question because it's, no, it's let me, this that's is why not I wanted to simplify it. I want to bring it to parents. If you were speaking to other parents about the value and what it's brought to in terms of internal calm for your son and ease for your son and for for the family, how significant is that and how would you language it? The the significance of it is that for example of instead of having an outrage moment he would then be able to calm himself down through breathing exercises. So that is very, very helpful because um, anger management is, is, is very difficult for a parent to teach uh, somebody on the Asperger's scale. Or now, well, now it's called autism. So it's very difficult. And that's one of the things that parents do struggle with when it comes to autism. So learning the techniques it, for the individual is very important and then as parent you knowing the technique as well so that you can go along with him uh, or, or her in, in in the autism spectrum sometimes they would not listen to the verbal communication so it's more of the tactical communication so as parent you will have to you know feel the breath along with him go along the pace and so forth so there's simple techniques but very very useful uh, and and it's good as parents as you to know it uh, I evolved from, from that, and that guided me to our next side, to the healing part of yoga. Uh, and that's where I, I learned to heal myself now. So that's where I am. I am in a community every Wednesday we meet. Uh, that's what we do. We, we heal each other. For example, I always struggled with cholesterol, triglycerides, high blood pressure. And I used to take medication. Now I am on zero medication. Excellent. And and my health is the best that ever, ever can be, just using the healing techniques that come along with it. So both 
the, the, the autism spectrum, you can address it. And then all the physical ailments that you may have, you can address it through this tech method and technology. I think part of it is really the strength of listening. When you listen to yourself internally, yes. quietly, yes. you can heal your body. You can heal, you're listening to what your needs are. You are responding to the yeses and noes. And very seldom we are not doing that. We're functioning from the external. Uh, that is correct. Listening to your breath, listening to the pulses of every individual organ. It's so That's amazing, the power that it brings. That's exactly right. Um, Ms. McCutcheon, you said you work with women. With um, I'm really curious to know if any aspect of this is applied to the women you work with. Um, well, I have, I have not done it with the woman, but I've used it with one of my daughters who has um, ADHD. And what we've done is that we've had her going to yoga from like about five years old. She's been, she's been doing yoga. So there's really, I mean, I have really seen the benefits of yoga in her little life, you know, she's 15 now. So she's been doing it. She's been doing it for, for quite a while. So it, it has really, um, I mean, our house is nicer and calmer and, you know, because she can use the yoga techniques to calm herself. And what Victor was saying is true. The anger is real. And when they get angry, Having a mechanism, having a method to help them through is really, really important. And so what I'm what I'm going to do this March, I'm going to start using the yoga with the woman. And I've already had a conversation with Michelle to see how we can partner together to bring that. Yeah, that's wonderful. You know, I, I'm starting to think about there must be a way that we can brand yoga as being something hip and accessible definitely you know, because um there's no shortage of young people and the chain of reactions their parents we us um it's a collective it's a generational wellness intention that we should have that we need to have you know in the states i don't know if it's other places but they have these timeouts you know when a child is not acting accordingly they put them in a corner and they and the child feel punished feels punished not heard or listened to, but imagine if a parent or a teacher or um, an adult with that child was able to give them a, a, um, uh, a directive that in inspired them to breathe and to own who they were in that moment, to empower who they are in that moment and not punish who they are in that moment. Because psychologically, emotionally, that's where the damage is. It's the judgment, it's the critique um and the assessment that is negative and so somehow or another you have to be right there with them you know when i was growing up we had laying on of hands i don't know if they use that terminology now where you can like just touch a person right where the breathing is and move with them your, your calm gave them their calm and move back and forth we're not touching that much anymore we're not engaged that much anymore we're not attuned in tune to our our breath, whether you call it yoga or not, not everybody has the has had the opportunity to be formally introduced to yoga, but there's an essence of who we are where that breathing, that pause, that listening, that surrender, that transference of energy is already yours. We just have not learned the academics or the practice. And so that's one of the things that's very important, I think, going around. This year says it. This year says so much because it unifies everyone is feeling similar aches, similar challenges across the globe. No matter the country, there's a trickle down of impact. I would like to, we had talked about a couple of things the other day that um, do you think that there are any... Um, stigmas uh, other than, than, than the fancy part of yoga. I know that people for years thought that yoga um, was to replace religion and it is not. It actually is the thing that gives you strength to receive your faith. And so um, have you, especially in the Caribbean when we talk about it and different places where denominations are very strong 
and sometimes we're resisted the thought of meditation or being still to breathe. And as Ms. Panton said, it was prayer. It is prayer. It takes you right to wherever that scripture is or that, that the word of your grandmother who's quoting from a, a, a holy book or something or, or whatever. So I'm just asking you all that because I know that that comes up. It was also part of the challenge that delayed our being able to um, introduce yoga in, in various areas. Um, how do we remove the stigma? I think uh, the, the point that you made that people see it as a replacement when really it's a compliment. It's a compliment. You know, I, I think we need to make people aware of, you know, the compliment, the, the, the com you know, how it complements your religion. You know, uh, when I first got into yoga, you know, I heard people talking about, oh, you're worshiping the sun. <laughs> but no, I mean, there, there are uh, parallels that we can draw to, to any religion, you know, that, that we, we were exposed to or grew up with. And, um, you know, I like the word that Ms. Torres used about alignment. It's such a strength to be, you know, aligned with yourself. You know, like yoga is really a gift to yourself. Imagine if kids are exposed to this at a young age, like Ms. McCutcheon said, she started with her five-year-old. And, you know, at 15, she is so very strong in who she is, she knows who she is. And, you know, that that's really what it's all about. It's alignment. Every religion, you know, no matter which one we, we talk about, uh, speaks about love, right? But then we say love others, you know, the way that we love ourselves. But do we love ourselves? You yes. know, how are we loving ourselves? You know, um, we, we, we can't give love if we haven't accepted love for our own selves. You know, and I think that's so very important, you know, and, and, and yoga teaches love. So it's, it's, it's a matter of finding, you know, where, where they complement each other and drawing the parallels so people can see that, you know, we're not trying to replace, you know, what you grew up with or your traditions or what you know. No, we're, we're, we're giving you another element to strengthen that. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. And sometimes people think when you use the word self, that it's selfish. And I've always been able to relate to people that it's not selfish, it's self-full, right? Self-full. Um, so that we are fit to receive and engage and exchange with others. And when we are feeling empty, that if you've worked on that muscle, um, it finds its way back. It's a pause. I can tell when I've been so busy and that I have forgotten to pause. And that since a child, my pauses were very powerful. They, they returned me back to my soul self before I was calling it yoga, right? Be I was, so I was that child. And so when I know that something so simple um, can be given, can be gifted, can be shared, can be um regenerated for one we need to do more of it and share it in a way so it doesn't feel like it's just a spa or a membership club or something but it's what we're doing anyway in the moment when someone is being quiet and they don't want to share just give them the tools so that they are really working on that internal muscle um and everything so um Mr. Ambassador, uh, Ambassador Sabaz, yeah, I, I, I was just ready to call you. Uh -huh. and, and it's just one of the things that um, I, I recall when, when we had started off with just the, the, the counselors within the small group um, in terms of doing the, the yoga with Michelle. Um, and everybody thought that how they had to get fancy clothes, this, that, the other. And uh -huh. at the end of the day, when, when, when we had finished, with the um, session, it was like, whoa, a lot of load is off me, yeah. you know. Um, and when we had done it for the counselors nationally, they said within, within, the, within the group that how they would take the practice to their schools. Because what, what happens is that 
a lot of times we don't take the time to say, you know, something I'm going to dedicate the time for myself. Mm-hmm. Okay. And even in terms of, 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 of mindfulness, when you look at the mindfulness, if you're able to take five minutes for yourself in the morning, just to be able to be centered so that you're able to understand what is happening around the world and what is happening with you, then right. it makes a world of difference. Because then what happens is that there is that introspection of how you're able to be a better person. There's that introspection in terms of self-regulation. And a lot of times what happens is that we would like to respond to just this various stimuli that are there. However, if we're centered and we're practicing, then we, we can understand that I do not have to be regulated externally, but I'm regulated internally. And so these are some of the things that we, we have to be able to look at. So at the same time is how do we build that ecosystem though? So that there's a language, there's terminology. So I may not know internal yoga terminology. I don't. How do we make that layman's talk so that we are engaging people on a regular basis? The same way we know the lyrics to a song, the move dance movements, how are we finding when one says take a chill pill, we don't just mean lay off. How do we find the language that says, why don't we pause a minute? And we got it, we have to teach it. We have to make sure everybody's understanding it so that now that we've talked about in this conversation, how to do it for oneself, how do we pass the baton? How do we make sure that we're all ambassadors to recognize that someone can actually do what Mr. Miranda does with his son or as Ms. McCutcheon did with her daughter. How do we do that? How do we work with that? Because it, it helps the healthiness of the whole household, of the whole student body, of the whole community. You know, when we're, we're not being belligerent to someone or reactionary to someone who may not have the skill, we need to give them the call. What is that call? You know, um, I grew up Islamic and you know, there's five, five prayers a day. And the prayers are really for submission. It's really for the pause. It's really for the five minutes here and there. But in your, when you're in those foreign countries, you actually hear the call and it enables everybody to realize, oh, there's a pause, let me pause. This is not about, you know, the thing that distracted me. This is the thing that I need to tune into. How do we give people that call? Is how do we translate the call? Am I being too uh, abstract in the inquiry? <laughs> no, 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 no. Go ahead. I just, I, I think we have to stop with the, with the using words as, as um, weapons. Yes. You know, like that's the first thing that came to mind. Like that word selfish is such a trigger. Yeah. You know, and I grew up in a big family. I grew up, there were five kids. You know, I was the second oldest. We were taught to share not only with each other, you know, with, with, with the neighbors, you know, and, and things like that, growing up in a community. And so sometimes, you know, as a kid, that word selfish can get thrown around a lot when you decide that you need to take some time for yourself. But we really need to stop with those words that we're using as weapons. They're creating barriers. You know, they're, they're, you know, t- taking a minute from for yourself is not selfish no. because if you don't take care of yourself, how are you going to take care of other people? You know, you need to be full so that you can then give, you know, what do you have to give if you're empty? You know, so I think, you know, maybe just some more positive words or, or not using these words as weapons could be a start. And we have to be mindful of it. So it's appreciation. Right. You know, most people, when you talk about people feeling wounded because of bad words or terminologies, most people do not walk on earth feeling appreciated at all. And, it, and often it's done by measure. Compar- and, uh, yes. And one of the things, um, Ambassador Shabazz, is it, just looking at, at times how the young people, they also frame it, that if I'm taking self um, time for myself, um, or if there's no action, then I'm bored. Okay, because that is one of the that one of the the words that come out a lot of time. I am bored. So then sometimes I have to ask, how can you be bored with you? 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, right. How can you be bored with you? Yeah. You know, and so um, it is. It is then that we we instill in terms of saying, you know, something. It's taking the pause to be able to be with yourself. Because remember, we're we're, we're now in in this era of whereby the devices, the phone, the um, games, Facebook, all of those things are taking precedent. Okay. But then we have to be able to tell our young people, take some time for yourself, you know, pause a bit, you know, breathe in, breathe out and pause so that you'll be able to accept you for you. So we have to find more language that paints the picture of the value of that. So when you just say sit and, and enjoy you, we have not had a cultural practice of understanding what the you is, what the benefit is. So that becomes our extended work to paint the picture like you do with a young person in a lullaby or a storybook. If you do this, this is how you get to feel and how you get to um, persevere. We have to find the language for that. I know we're gonna be wrapping up soon and I wanted to, um, number one, thank you all. I need to do a second session. I'm gonna, I'm gonna call everybody with my own Zoom um, because I think we've just hit on the, uh, the tip of the iceberg because it's not just a discussion about mindfulness and yoga, it's how do we manifest that, which will make it available to others. We want this to win. We want people to win. We want people to feel their exaltation and their value and their worth. What do we do? So that we don't need 365 um, days for the next festival. What do we do in the meantime? And I know that I'm already thinking about how I'm gonna be reaching each of you. Uh, including you, Mr. Miranda, who's not on um, video. Um, I will find you um, because I think this is very, very important. Each person that was on this um, particular panel has a really key lens, experience, role that's very potent and impactful, and we can't drop any balls. We have to make sure that we are a chain link that enables the next person um, in front of us, around us, to be empowered so that they can reach the people we can't see and get to. You know, my mom used to always say, find the good and praise it. When we would go to her with complaints or something that didn't, she goes, find the good and praise it. Meaning you had to be forensic about it. Move all of the, pull back the layers, get the debris out of the way, find the good in that and praise it. Now, of course, when she said it to me, we thought it was dismissive, but here I am in my sixties, recalling it, referring to it. So we now need to put dimension to these things. And my father would always often relay that may we meet again in the light of understanding. So there may have been a discourse, but somewhere in there, since we wanna to get to the same finish line, since we wanna make sure that everybody's a beneficiary of the best of what we have to offer, may we meet again in the light of understanding. So in conclusion, I would like for each of you in your own words, if you'd like to um, share a short statement, a phrase, a, a quote, um, a gift of encouragement um, that of, of self-care or best wishes for the wellness of others. And I'd love to hear that from each of you in your own order. I, I, I could go first. Okay. Um, I had enough for that quote. Um, you cannot always control what goes on outside, but you can control what goes on inside. It's very important to look inside and see all the things that are affecting you and find solutions to come and bring peace to yourself. Changes around the world can bring many difficulties that we can't control, but what we can control is how we cope and react with these difficulties. And it's very important to remember that there are always ways of managing it and improving the quality of our lives. You just have to find something that works for you. Mm -hmm. Anyone in any order? I can go. Yes. Um, so last week, last Sunday, my daughter said to me, mommy, I can't cope anymore. And I said to her, okay, baby, just a little bit more. And this year I lost my brother and my father within two weeks of each other. And I've had to tell myself just a little bit more, 
just a little bit more. And if every time we have a situation, rather than give up, and we, we could just say just a little bit more, just a little bit more, and it gets us over that hump and we keep going. So my encouragement today is, to, is for you to tell yourself every time you get in a difficult situation, just tell yourself just a little bit more and you'll get there. Thank you. Thank you. I will go. I am, I'm known to tell people to relax. And um, sometimes it's when everybody would be coming running in and like for them, the world is coming to an end. I would tell people just relax. And it is one of the things that we need to be able to do so that we're able to say, you know, something. This too shall pass. However, when it passes, I will be relaxed and I will be able to assess the situation far better and to be able to make a wise decision. So for everybody out there, the Rock Foundation and the Rock Ambassadors and those who are listening throughout the world, relax because this too shall pass. Okay, I'll go next then. Uh, there's so many things that come to mind, but the first thing is gratefulness for me. Let us be grateful for this panel. I'm so grateful for it. Uh, I would also like to encourage everyone to be a part of this community, to be part of Rock, so that the community can grow and all of us grow individually, inter internally, so that as we grow, we, we are able to help others grow and as this, at the same time heal the community who has a lot of anxiety right now, a lot of stress due to COVID. Uh, and that's why I'm part of the Human Resource Association because then that I'm trying to do the same thing, how to have that conversation, how to go about addressing the, the, the workplace scenarios that are occurring due to COVID. There are so many sad stories that you hear, uh, especially, uh, am I positive because I was just with him yesterday. So all of these things, people are going to all of this day in, day out. A lot of tears are being shed right now. So let us all be strong. Let us all go so that we can help others. Thank you, Mr. Miranda. Um, I have a very uh, simple line that I like to use to reinforce even to myself. Um, the answers are within, you know. Um, we don't need to look externally, you know, we need to listen to ourselves more, you know, listen to your own intuition, who knows you better than, than your own self, you know, so take some time to listen to yourself, whether it's to listen to, you know, what your body is telling you, what your mind is telling you, you know, the answers are always within, don't be afraid of your own intuition. Thank you. And Ms. Torres, did you? Yeah. Yeah, I'll share it all. So I would like to share something that I often have to remind myself about, but it's that you are perfect no matter what has happened in the past or what you are currently experiencing. And with reference to our topic today, you are a beacon of resilience, respect, and empowerment. So claim your inner peace and feel it because it's a new day to celebrate yourself. Well, thank you very much. You know, I, when I was speaking to Ms. Uh, Williams, um, I guess about a month ago in preparing for this, I was referencing because I'm amongst those who is not a yoga practicer, but I am a, a meditator, um, as I mentioned earlier, since childhood. And, and so thus I appreciate all aspects of it and need to learn it academically more formally. But what I did know and what I said to her in the conversation was resilience the power of resilience, uh, respect and empowerment, and hence the title of the program. But we don't want it to just be words. We wanna figure out how each one of those words are forensically adaptable to one's marrow, one's soul self. We have to get there. When I use words, I am not using them loosely. That's why sometimes they can be abstract and I'm searching for it because my I'm looking for the actual intention of, of, the, of the words. And so I'm hoping that 
you all will um, receive me when I reach out again offline. And since so many are dedicated to this mission, I thus am as well. And I want to invite those who are not part of ROC to join the mission, spread the word, even if you're not in Belize, um, but that the intention, the mission, um, the direction, we have to make sure that we are a well-bodied soul uh, moving across. I think the fact that the globe felt the wounds at the same time is also a gift. It's not something that happened over there or over there. We all have language that we can use and share, whether it's the, uh, the economic pandemic, whether it's the health pandemic, whether it's global a climate change pandemic, whatever it is, we all are part of the conversation. So we are, we are a body of oneness and already. So how do we make sure that that language is clarified and, and sincere so that young people and mature people alike receive it as a blessing as intended? And so I would like to close with my parents two lines again which is no matter what you're going through in life, find the good and praise it. And when I see you next time, may we meet again in the light of understanding. Blessings.